All right, uh, today, exposition on prayer week four. Um, last week, we went over, like, just checking yourself, checking your heart. Um, are you walking in obedience? Are you walking in faith? Are you doing Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trusting the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, uh, and all your ways acknowledging Him? Um, are you one that's staying committed in your suffering? Are you walking with the Lord no matter what? Um, are you taking no as divine guidance from God that He is the one who's saying it. He's the one that's guiding you and leading you in this struggle, leading you in this time. And, uh, you know, as we get there, as we see our heart, we're going to come now to the attitude of suffering and uh, really what suffering really is for the Christian. Uh, I believe if you're not saved suffering, <clears throat> you might as well accept the humanistic uh, view of uh, avoiding any kind of suffering at all costs and just trying to be... Uh, because suffering is defeat, but for Christians, suffering is victory, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, suffering as a gift, suffering as a gift from God, and uh, I'm going to explain that more fully. I know a lot of people are suffering as a gift, but let's, uh, let's look at it. We're going to look at our attitudes, and uh, the book, The Cup and the Glory, it states, God is by nature the God who gives. God is one who loves to give. He's created everything we have because God gives, and you don't have because God chose not to give you, so... I think that's why it's easy to find contentment if you truly understand this and uh, not always compare yourself to people that have more or people that have less. Uh, compare yourself to Christ, not not others. Compare yourself to the Word of God, not other people. All right, so <clears throat> um, the word for grace um, used when God gives gifts is the word uh, charizomai. I'm probably butchering that. It's the original Greek. It means to give graciously or to bestow on one a favor of kindness. Now, <clears throat> in our thinking, when we think of grace, uh, we have the usually the sense that it's a good thing, it's nice, and it's great, and it's always usually uh, to our benefit, and it's something that makes us usually feel nice and happy. Uh, so when we think of gifts, um, even in the scripture, when God gives gifts, it was like it's in consideration to spiritual gifts, it's in consideration to... Uh, uh, salvation and even him giving us his son Jesus Christ so when we look at the gifts um, we think of grace and these free gifts of God that is given to us uh, Romans 832 and other such things now as we go we have to understand that that same word for grace for giving gifts is used uh, when God gives us suffering um, that might blow your mind but this is the same word used in Philippians 129 uh, we have to see suffering as a gift, and uh, if you're given a gift, usually you're thankful for it. And that's why uh, we have to be thankful always, as it says in Thessalonians, be thankful always, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Um, I'm going to explain that more later. But uh, when we look at Philippians 129, it states, uh, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his namesake. And so there it is right there, is the idea that those, that word is given to you, that gift, that gift given to you, is considered a, um, a good thing. It's considered, it's, it uses that word to give graciously, to give um, and bestow on kind, uh, favor of kindness. Um, so when we look at suffering, the first thing we have to come to is uh, understanding that suffering isn't something just done against us, it's done for us. Uh, that should change your mentality towards that. I know in our, if you're in the usual American Christian mindset, uh, um, you've been influenced by world philosophy that says the only thing that's good is pleasure, really, or whatever goes my way, or if I have lots of money, blah, 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 prosperity mentality. But we have to change our thoughts to that, that suffering is is good. Um, it's a it's gift from God. It is from God. God only allows you to go through what he desires and so we have to understand that when we look at suffering it's not something to be avoided uh, it's not something that we have to fight against but it's something we should accept in, in the humility of our hearts let's uh, moving on um, let's think uh, I wanted to give some examples of good that has come from suffering the good things that God has brought forth from suffering and remember this is only for Christians because Christians should start to have a desire that desires the things of God that desires God's glory above all else uh, if that's not it, then um, when you face suffering, it's a reason to blame God and curse God and hate God and uh, ask and bewilderment, oh God, why are you doing this? You don't care. You don't think about me. 
Um, but for the true Christian that's maturing and understanding the sufferings from God for the purpose of God, according to his plan, that he cares for us, that he suffers with us, that he's there for us, we can understand that God works all things for good, Romans 8, 28. So let's go and give some examples uh, taken from the book and, well, really from Scripture. Paul and Silas in Acts 16, they were evangelizing. Um, this woman, Lydia, came to faith, but then there was another people that didn't like them. They riled up the crowd. Uh, the magistrates beat them with rods, stripped their clothes off, and then they had them put in prison. When they were in prison, <clears throat> they were shackled um, with their feet spread apart. And so around midnight, probably because they were in so much pain, they couldn't sleep, uh, they started singing praise songs and hymns. Okay, now, <laughs> I don't know if that's the normal, I don't know what people would do if you were in prison shackled, legs apart at midnight and start singing praise songs, okay? And that's not usually the quota for behavior in prison. So here are these guys, they're in prison, they're praising God, they're worshiping God, even in their pain, even though they've been beaten, even though they're in prison, unjustly, and then <clears throat> they sing praise songs. But what happens from this is the jailer hears them singing praise songs. And later, because of all this, because they rejoiced in their suffering, um, that jailer and his whole household came to Christ, and the church of uh, Philippi was started. See, God used that suffering to start and save a whole family, and then a whole church was formed in uh, Philippi. And, I mean, that's just amazing. Now, if your heart is for the things of God, that will bring you more joy than anything, and that will make that suffering seem so insignificant. Um, but if, you're, if your heart is not for God, if your heart is not for the will of God, well, guess what? Your suffering is just, it's not worth it in the end. So as we go on, um, uh, that church later went through their own suffering. Uh, that church later was going through hard times. They were poorer than poor. They had no money. And they were going through their suffering. And then that's why later uh, Paul in Philippians is encouraging them with that verse, saying, you know, you're going through the suffering because, um, because it's a gift from God for you. Uh, God gave Paul the suffering, the gift of suffering for them, that they would even be there. They wouldn't be there if Paul didn't suffer, but because he did, they're there. Now they are suffering, and not only are they just suffering, and so, the, oh, sorry, this leads me to another point. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1 through 4 says, uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in my affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Um, there's a sense that you go through sufferings to learn a lesson, to learn how to handle it, so that you can help others get through it. You're, comf you're, you're comforted in suffering to comfort others. Now, think about this also, is that Philippians, the Church of Philippians, when they were suffering and when they had poor and they were poor and they had no money, they still looked for ways to bless other people. In the midst of their suffering, they were looking for ways to bless other people. Does that, uh, is that the attitude of your heart in your suffering? Are you, oh, woe is me, I, I'm suffering, my life sucks, I'm going through a hard time? Or are you like, oh man, I'm suffering, but I don't really care because it's from God and I trust in Him, but I want to make, I want to produce fruit through this time. See, you're not, you're not in suffering. We're not in this to escape from suffering. We're in this to produce fruit in the midst of suffering, meaning we're in this to show Christ even in our hardest times. Okay, um, It's not about just escaping a bad situation. Uh, there's no growth from that. Um, I can go off on that later. Um, let's go on. So our suffering will either be used to help others, and we can claim victory over that suffering in such a way, or we can let it defeat us and let it make us bitter and uh, just hateful. Um, another story I want to end this one section with is there was a missionary who uh, had five degrees, super intelligent. He was ministering as a missionary to this tribe in Africa uh, for a long time. No one came. No one sought him. No one came to Bible study. No one did anything. Uh, eventually, later, his son uh, sadly passed away and died. When he was, um, he put his son in a box to go take him up to be buried. Uh, at this time, when he was doing it, one of the tribesmen saw what happened, knew what was going on, went to help him. As they were carrying the box, the missionary started to cry, and he started to weep just uh, profusely. And so the tribesmen saw this, <clears throat> went to his tribe, and told everyone that the white man cries. And they were so amazed by this that he actually showed emotion, he actually showed tears, that they were so amazed that he actually could shed uh, water from his face that they went to see him. 
uh, they went to they went to the um, funeral service, then they went to the Bible studies, and then they kept showing up. And not just a few, the whole tribe showed up, and many got saved. And glory to God. That's Romans eight twenty eight. God works all things to good to those that love Him, call according to His purpose. Now later, someone was like, "Was it worth the cost?" And he said, "His thought was, was it worth God to send His only Son to death for me?" And so. Do we see the good at it? And I think when our perspective is right, that God is sovereign and in control and using suffering for our good, we can say as James 1, 2, count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds. <clears throat> I mean, uh, 1 Peter 5, 10 says, uh, God eventually will restore, confirm, strengthen uh, you uh, after this little time of suffering. Because really in the perspective of eternity, suffering is so short and uh, so worth what it does, so worth the cost. Uh, so it seems... Um, also, another thing, a great thing that comes from this is the, that we can find a greater intimacy with God. In the book, it says, God bless and honors such a desire to know Him on a level oblivious to most believers, and the results continues throughout eternity. Uh, is, there seems to be a, a direct um, correlation there between suffering and intimacy and closeness with God. Uh, the, uh, if you want to know God more deeply, you have to be broken, so the sin that blocks us from knowing God more fully will be torn away, and then more of Christ can be seen in you. Um, a lot of people, I want to know you, God. I want to, I want to be broken for you, God. I want to understand you more, God. I want to understand more of your ways. Uh, well, guess what? The way God is going to have to do that is to break you and put you through a time of suffering so that you can realize who he is more deeply. Um, you, don't, you, you don't get to earn a revelation just by the easy way out. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so if your heart is right, if your attitude is right, you can be like Job. And in the midst of Job's suffering, he says, Though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. Your only hope is God. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to end with, I know this is going on, uh, is God's gift of Christ to us was his greatest suffering. Um, I hope we can understand that. That God's greatest gift to us was also God's greatest point of suffering. His, his time on the cross. He humbled himself to be poor, to be nothing. And so our greatest gift from God is His greatest suffering. And so our path of um, glorifying Him, our, our suffering is His glory. When we suffer for Him, when we suffer in this life and show Christ, that brings Him even more glory. And so in your time of suffering, are you thinking, this is something good, this is a gift from God for me to refine me, to define me, to, so that I can help others and be a gift to others and, be, and show grace to others? And then also, when you suffer, the world takes notice. If you suffer rightly for God, the world will take notice. And then he will be glorified and it gives us opportunity to say, well, it's not because of me, it's because of God, it's because of Christ. Um, so when we look at everything that we're doing, every, all the suffering that we go through, there's a greater thing behind it. It, it. it leads us to greater intimacy, greater knowledge of our God and Savior. You know, one person said, if you burn for Jesus, the world will come watch you burn. Let's burn for Christ and uh, know that suffering is just another way to give glory to our God. And if your heart is truly for God and love for God, that would be your heart's desire, to glorify Him whether you suffer or not, to be, as Paul says, content with much or little. Uh, all right. Thank you.